It's time for the Fred Jackson Show with running back Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinski. Brought to you by Duville College, Educating for Life, and Gate Circle Wine and Liquor. Now from the WBBZ TV studio at the Eastern Hills Mall, welcome Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinski. And welcome to the Fred Jackson Show. Great audience tonight. And of course, we got the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Jackson. And our special guest tonight, we have running back Ronnie Wingo on the show tonight. Let's hear it for Ronnie Wingo. Of course, you can send your questions or comments to the Fred Jackson Show at WBBZ. Also on Facebook with Brad Galber. Let's hear it for Brad Galber. Okay, this is, these are the shows that are a little challenging, Fred, because <laughs> yesterday was, without a doubt, the worst game of the year. I mean, it was from start to finish. Mm. It started bad. It was bad in the middle. It was bad at the end. I mean, you've been around for a long time in this game. You've played the game a long time. We've talked about this before. For some reason, a t an entire team can come out flat, and that seems to be what happened yesterday yeah. in some respects. Yeah, I mean, uh, especially for us on offense. You know, I think that's where it, re it was really bad for us. You know, our defense kept us in it as best they could, you know, uh, but we didn't get, do them any favors with the, the, the early three and outs, the early turnovers, the early short fields for them on offense. Um, and, you know, that anytime you do that, you're not going to have a very good opportunity to win football games. And uh, we played, you know, just, I mean, completely like crap, you know, just to be blunt and honest about it on the offensive side of the ball. And, uh, anytime you do that, you know, your chances of winning a game in the NFL are not very, uh, are not very good. And, um, you know, and it, it, it came to fruition yesterday with the way we played and uh, the things we did, you know, running the ball, you know, as many turnovers we had. We didn't protect EJ, you know, worth a lick. And, you know, every time he dropped back to throw a ball, he, he was getting hit. And we gave up, I think, seven, eight sacks. And uh, when you do that, you know, you're not going to play well. The, the offensive line had a tough day. Seven sacks. He only rushed. The, he only had 16 carries between you and CJ. Mm -hmm. uh, only five for yourself, which is really low. <laughs> Was that just the way the, the the tone of the game? You fell behind. You really couldn't try to run the ball. But in, even Doug Marone said when you tried to run the ball, there wasn't much there. Yeah, I think the the score early, you know, had a lot to do with that. Anytime you're down, you know, 17-3, you know, 20. 24-3, um, it, it's going to be hard to run the ball in those situations. And um, we didn't do well at all, you know, when we did have that opportunity. I think both CJ and I averaged two yards a carry. You know, anytime you're doing that, you're, you're getting behind in the sticks. And, um, you know, we got we to gotta be better at that. You know, that's something we have to take personally as an offensive unit and uh, uh, get corrected. Early on, uh, first couple series, EJ was throwing the ball on first down. Was that an attempt to get Tampa out of the, the run defense, try to open it up a little bit for the running game? Yeah, you know, it, it was something we knew that on defense, they, they geared up to stop the run, you know, and something we wanted to try and take advantage of. Uh, we wanted to get guys in, in situations where they were playing one-on-one, -on -one, you know, uh, coverage. And, you know, we like all our receivers one-on-one -on -one against anybody, and we wanted to take advantage of that, you know, and we didn't do it. And, uh, you know, it put us behind the sticks, and we, were, we, we went three and out, you know, a lot in the game, and uh, we had a couple of turnovers as well. After the game, uh, Coach Marone had the door shut for about 20 minutes, uh, and he said after the game he wasn't going to talk about what was said, but if the players wanted to talk about what was said, that was fine with him. I'm not going to ask you for specifics, but what was the gist of a closed-door meeting like that? Well, I mean, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, guys air out what they're thinking about, you know, the game and, and what's happened the past couple of weeks and, you know, what it is we think that we need to do to get over the hump, you know. And, uh, you know, like Coach said, you know, a lot of that, you know, we do want to keep in-house, you know, just because uh, you, you don't want to air your dirty laundry so to speak but you know it, it wasn't a, a, a swearing match or you know a, a, a fist of cuffs behind doors or anything like that it was just guys you know giving their opinions of, of, of what we think needs to be done you know and uh you know he allowed the captains to talk you know we even heard from you know uh Doug Whaley and uh Russ Brandon you know so um that that's just something that he felt like he needed to do at that point and you know we'll see what guys took to heart and see what kind of character we have in that locker room and, and how we finish these three games there were some comments made uh, by some of the players yesterday and again today that maybe not all the players are preparing as much as they can off the field 
during the week. Do you find that as a captain might be an indication of something going on? Well, I mean, maybe. You know, uh, t this is a game that's different, that's difficult, different from the college levels and uh, a lot more difficult. You know, you, you're going to see a lot of different things, you know, uh, as, you know, NFL players uh, when you're trying to play against defenses that are exotic, like Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay did some things that we hadn't seen all year, you know, and uh, that, that's something that's new, you know, and you have to be able to study that. You have to be able to see some of the things that they've done, you know, not only in the past three weeks, but in the first six weeks of the season. So um, it, it can definitely help, you know, and it, it, there's a reason we get iPads to study. There's a reason we get all those notes that we take when we're sitting in meetings. Uh, it's all keys to help us, uh, you know, be ready to go into a game and win. All right, I, I, I promise last week, I don't know if you remember last week, we had a question for an older B Buffalo Bills fan. He's older this week. He's, I would say he's maybe elderly now, but he, he says the, 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 uh, the penalty on Bird on the tackle on the backfield. I mean, he tackles the quarterback at the knees. He got flagged for basically tackling too low. W what is the game becoming? Tag. You know, uh, especially for quarterbacks. You know, uh, I, I think that was probably one of the worst calls I've seen all year. You know, uh, he's going in to make a tackle. You know, he didn't, you know, blatantly go at his knees and, and try and hurt him. You know, he went in to try and make a tackle. He, he didn't you know, uh, launch himself in, in, an, in a manner to, to hurt, you know, he was just, he tried to tackle him, you know, and when we got that penalty, of course, you know, that kept a drive alive and it gave them an opportunity to score a touchdown. Okay, and then uh, C.J. Spiller has an electrifying run, called back. As a running back, what does that do to you as a running back to have an 80-yard run? And, and at some point, I'm not sure if he saw the flag as he was running. Sometimes I know you can see it out of the corner eye. You have to finish the play. But yeah. you're, I'm sure you're wondering in your mind, is that against us or them? Yeah. It's almost always against your team yeah. if it's in the defensive backfield. But as a running back, what does that do to you in here? It, I mean, he saw it. You know, he was running, and he saw the ref pull his flag and throw it. You know, and, you know, he said while he was running, you know, I'm running all this way for no reason because I'm sure that flag is against us, but I'm going to finish this play anyway just in case it isn't. You know, it, I mean, it's heartbreaking. You know, you, you get a play that, that sparks your team. You know, hopefully we get this thing turned around and it just gets wiped away uh, for a holding penalty. And you go back and look at the penalty and it's a bad call, you know, we think. Okay, uh, next, Ronnie Wingo will be on stage. We'll be talking more about yesterday's game, looking ahead to next week, right after this on the Fred Jackson Show. And welcome back, Fred Jackson Show. And our guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, running back Ronnie Wingo with us now. First of all, I, I, I love your name. I mean, it sounds like you're a gunslinger, you know, Ronnie Wingo. When Ronnie Wingo comes to town, you better run. Uh, Ronnie, you're, you're a rookie on this team. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're new to the, to the NFL. You're new to Buffalo. You were, you were signed initially by Atlanta. You came to the Bills. First off, how do you like Buffalo, New York? I mean, it's different. I mean, my first time really coming up up north like this. I mean, the weather is totally different than what I'm used to. It gets real cold here, but I mean, I like it. It's a real low-key town, and everyone's nice around here. Um, you know, uh, being in the same room, you know, we've had a bunch of different guys in there. We were in there when TC was here. You know, we all knew what type of clown he was in that locker room. Uh, with him being released last week, you know, a lot was made of you kind of stepping into his role you know, playing in the game this weekend, did you kind of get a feel of what it was like to be an NFL running back? I mean, I got a, a little bit of a feel just be I mean, just being my first, my first real live action on offense. I mean, I played a New Orleans game on special teams. But, I mean, it was a good feeling. I thought it was going to be a little bit faster. I mean, but it's just, at the end of the day, it's just football. And then having guys like you and CJ in the room with me also helped me out. So it was a good, it was just a good debut. Well, you know, Fred, you brought this up. I mean, Tushard was a good friend. He got let go. You guys mm -hmm. had, you and CJ wore the jersey. Uh, but you said, you know, we, when you told me that Ronnie was coming, you said Ronnie would be cool talking about that. I mean, it's, it's a business. It's the NFL. Mm -hmm. Everybody understands the way it works. Yep. And, uh, I mean, that, that's just part of it. You know, even after Tushard got let go, he talked to us all day uh, Saturday and, you know, even before the game. You know, and I knew he was going to sign in Indy. Uh, after the game on Sunday, you know, he called us. He texted all of us in a group and said that he was going to go to Indy. You know, it, it's it's a business, but all of us in that room, we become like brothers. So it's sitting up here talking to Ronnie, you know, about it. It's just like talking about a brother who was here with us and he moved on to a different place.
Ronnie, you're, you're, uh, you know, you came from, you played in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. um, you're at the Buffalo Bills now. The offense, how's this offense? Uh, is it different from what you're accustomed to? Is it similar to what you saw in college? How is it? Yeah, it's real different, man. I remember my first day, that's why I laughed. My first day I got here, I was like, I run no huddle. So mm -hmm. it's, it's something different for me, but it's easy. It was, it, was, it was hard at first to learn just the different concepts of the offense, but having, like I said, having guys like them, older guys, it helped me out a lot. You know, I think something else that, uh, you know, helped him out, you know, I could we'll find out is, you know, having a guy like uh, Coach Wheatley as your coach, you know, that definitely helps a lot. You know, I know he spends extra time with you. Uh, you know, what are some of the things he talks to you about when he's talking to you? Yeah, like you said, when I first got here, we always stayed out the meetings. When he let, them, let the older guys go, we stayed out. Uh, like probably 40, 40, 45 minutes going over the offense, just helping with different tips, like to get better as a running back and doing different drills and practice and individual that we do every day helps me be able to become, become a better player. It's good to have an old man like this in the locker room. <laughs> yeah, he's 10 years older than me. Give him, give him crap about it all the time. So, but, yeah. I mean, it's, it's good wisdom, though. And then, like I told him, I said, he's a lucky old man. There's not too many old men can go out and do the things he do. Still got some moves. Just a little bit. You know, I'm still trying to hang on. I'm trying to keep up with young guys like this. You know, uh, every time you see a guy like this come in, you know, he, what, 6'2", 230, you know, he's coming in to take, you know, your position. You want to fight him for it, you know, and make him earn it. And, you know, he's a, a, a tremendous back coming in. He's going to compete, you know, and he pushes us. So anytime you get a young back like this, it's going to make you better and bring out some of the, some of the A game you have in you. Let's get some questions from the uh, viewers. We've got Brad Galber standing by. And, Brad, why don't we get some questions from the Twitterverse for both uh, Fred and Ronnie? Yeah, uh, the first one's going to be from Luke, and it's for Ronnie. He wants to know uh, what's the biggest difference from college to the NFL. And before this past Sunday, did you actually miss playing in games, being on the practice squad? Yeah, of course you miss it, but just you got to know your situation and just understand that everything is a, is a process. I knew my time would come. I didn't know when. But I just prepare every week, every week like that week would be my chance. So you got to prepare. I mean, of course, you're going to miss it and everything. So, yeah. How, let me ask you a question. How does your practice week differ from being on the practice squad and being on the active roster? When I was on practice squad, I just did practice squad reps and did scout team for special teams and everything like that. But now I have to do special, te special team scout, scout for the uh, defense, and then help, help Fred and CJ out during the week. So it's a workload, but I, Coach Wheatley had me doing extra conditioning, had me doing extra conditioning, so I was ready and prepared for it. Okay. The paycheck's a little better on the active roster, <laughs> yeah, that's, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Okay, Brad. Yeah, uh, this one's from Ron, and it's for uh, Fred. He wants to know, uh, do you anticipate any changes in how the team prepares this week? Um, I, more than, you know, uh, usual, we'll probably do a lot more. Uh, studying, you know, uh, I think they'll do more giving guys <clears throat> more stuff on their iPads to look at. Um, but as far as our practice and the way we do things in practice, uh, I, I think we, you know, do that well enough that th there's not going to be any dr drastic change changes like that. But um, I mean, we, we got to study more. We got to be accustomed to, to things that defenses are going to throw at us on the offensive side of the ball and uh, be prepared for some of the things that they'll do. Okay, Brad, next. Yep, uh, this one's from Celeste, and she wants to know, uh, for Ronnie, what's your favorite thing about Buffalo and being on the Bills? Favorite thing about Buffalo, I say, got some pretty good chicken wings. That's my favorite <laughs> food, so that's one thing. The favorite thing about being on the Bills is just, when I got here, I was like kind of shy, not knowing how everything was gonna be, but like, I just felt like I got brought in like, like, a, bro like a distant brother, so I just feel like the family atmosphere. Okay, Brad, next. Uh, this one is from SC, and uh, he wants to know, uh, I guess for both you guys, will the team enjoy not having three December home games in the cold this year, or would you still rather be playing at home? I mean, the, I mean we, we'd love playing at the Raw. So, I mean, anytime you get that opportunity, you love to play in front of a home crowd, um, you know, and, and have the crowd cheering you on. And uh, But we travel well, you know. Uh, I mean, down in Tampa, you know, we had – you know, a third of that crowd was Bills fans. So uh, we travel well, and, you know, anytime you got to play in snow, you know, uh, the, the opposing team has to play in that. So do we, though. You know, so uh, we got a lot of guys like this guy that, that's a rookie that, that isn't accustomed to that. So, you know, there's challenges in that, too. It's unusual on the schedule. you got back-to-back -back Florida teams. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely unusual, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> was the weather a factor at all yesterday? Was the heat a factor? Not at all. You know, I think guys relished it, you know, and uh, granted, we, I mean, we didn't play well, though. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say it was a factor. Well, especially when you look at some of the conditions some of the other teams played mm -hmm. in yesterday. Yeah. What, uh, what do we have next there, Brad? Yep, uh, this one's from uh, Matt, um, and uh, it's for Ronnie. He wants to know, what's it like joining the team come midseason? I mean, it's, it wasn't a, a big transition just because you see the guys, you see these guys every day, you mingle with them every day, and just being on a football team, you automatically really have that bond, but it just grows that you just be around each other more and more. Okay, Brad. Yep. And uh, this one's from Marcus. He wants to know, uh, does seeing a guy like Thad make the jump from the practice squad to actually starting in the NFL give you more of a reason to think you can too? Yeah, even guys like that, even guys like Fred next to me, I mean, his, his story is really similar to mine, so where uh, I want my story to be similar to his in, in the case. So I'm just going through the process now and just trying to build and get better each week. Fred, as a captain, and you kind of alluded to it, but you've got a young man here, came in midseason, uh, in the running back room. Do you automatically just step up and say, we've got to make this guy feel welcome? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think... When you want a guy to go out and play hard with you, uh, you know, on Sundays, the best thing you could do is make him feel like you're going to do you're going to do everything you can to help him. And, you know, when you do that, you get the best of, you know, every teammate that you have in the locker room, you know, whether it's a new guy or, or somebody that's been there for 10 years, you want them to know, you know, that that you you need and appreciate them. So, you know, they're going to show up and play well for you. Was Ronnie the victim of any pranks yet from your uh, your group? We took care of you so far. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's a good care of it's still, We still got three games, though. <laughs> <laughs> still got three games. Okay, when we come back, now we know Fred's competitive. Hot Shot Challenge is next. Fred's going to go up against one of his fellow running backs right after this in the Fred Jackson Show. 2-0 no against running backs, too. Members of our studio audience receive a gift certificate and compete for prizes from Dave & Buster's. Watch the games, play the games at the Eastern Hills Mall. And Poster Art, Buffalo's only poster and t-shirt gift gallery. Featuring the Fred X t-shirt, also at the Eastern Hills Mall. And welcome back. It's time now for the Hot Shot Challenge. And, of course, this segment we have two contestants from the audience. They team up with Fred and his guest. And this week we have... Deliani. Deliani, and you have a support group. Who's this, Deliani? Who do we have? Do you know who these two are? Oh, you don't know who they are? They're just strangers came out of the crowd, apparently. Who do we have here? Your name, dear? Amara. Amara, and your name, honey? Buena. Oh, wow, and you're going to cheer for her? Okay, good. Okay, and your name is? Daniel. Daniel, okay, Daniel. So, Daniel, you're going to play with Ronnie, and Deliani, you're going to play with Fred, okay? So, Daniel, you're up first. You're the visitors, okay? You ready, buddy? Okay, Deliana, you're up, dear. Ooh, almost. All right, Ronnie. You can take the lead right here. Oh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Fred Jackson has the hammer. Fred's not going to miss. And there it is. You know, I swear you're paying these guys off, Fred. You know, okay, you want to take another shot, Deliani? Yeah, why not? What the heck? We got a couple seconds. Fred and De Deli, Deliani and Daniel, take another shot. Let's see how you do. Okay, go ahead, Daniel. Fred, why don't you help her out? Throw go ahead, get her closer. Let's go. Put her right in there, honey. Oh, all right, she got it in. Good job, good job. All right, we'll be back to wrap up the Fred Jackson Show right after this. Time to wrap up. Ronnie, thanks so much for being on the show. Good luck the rest of the way, and, uh, you know, keep an eye on Fred for us, all right? Yes, sir. Appreciate you having me. Okay. And Fred? 
Another game. This is a must-win game for this team. It is. You know, uh, we especially after performance like that, we got to show up and you know, uh, you know, show that we're. I mean, that's not the team that we are, and we got to show what type of team we want to be. Okay, we're out of time. Until next week, have yourselves a great night. Much better tomorrow. Good night, everybody.